All right, I'm here at the NCMR with Jacqueline Friedman. She is the founder and executive director of Women, Action, and the Media. She is the author of What You Really, Really Want, The Smart Girl's Shame-Free Guide to Sex and Safety. She is the host. We're on the radio, so I'm not going to swear. She is the host of Effing While Feminist. <laughs> However, you're adults. You know what I'm saying here. We always swear on that podcast because it has a swear word in the name. Exactly. All of which and more you can find at JacquelineFriedman.com. Jacqueline, thanks for sitting down with me. Happy to. So, you were on a panel today. Yeah. Uh, what, what was the panel about and what did you talk about? The panel is on, on sort of loving and hating pop culture and sort of the ways that we can use pop culture for good and subvert the ways in which it's used for evil, I guess. <laughs> so it was, it was part sort of just like, what are we into and why are we into it? But also like, you know, what do you do when you love a show but have real critiques of it? Or, you know, like how do you um, subvert? the negative messages that are out there, how do we get to be do more production, right? Like, what are the economic impacts of pop culture? Why do we need to talk about pop culture, pop culture in the first place? Like, I, I hear a lot when I talk about pop culture, right? So either people saying, what are you talking about? It's just a show, or it's just a song, it's just fun. Or on the flip side, like, why are you spending your time talking about pop culture when, like, women are being raped in Syria, right? right like, yeah. as though, like, one can only concentrate on one issue ever at a time. Or also no, one could not, like, like, let's, like, like, activists shouldn't also relax and, you know, have things that, in, you know, relax their brains. Well, and, exactly. and, you know, that, like, you have to have interests, otherwise you will, you'll burn out like, like that. Part of what we talked about is sort of, like, the stuff that we watch that we wouldn't necessarily politically justify, but mm -hmm. that, like... You know, we like it, and yeah. we're people, you know, yeah. and we get to just be people some of the time. Right. No, you never get to be a person. <laughs> <laughs> I demand that I get to be a people. <laughs> so, so like, I mean, yeah, but that really is, like, people, I don't think people even think about how much uh, just the media you consume, if you're in a grocery store line, just the, the, the images that, that, that even, like, from when you're a little kid, you, you see these hyper-sexualized images mm -hmm. that, 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 that shape, you know, unless you, if you don't think about it, it shapes a person's opinion and, and, and if you do you have to make the conscious choice like no 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 that's wrong this is not what, what, what the world is like and what the world should be like and none of us can even be perfect about that I mean right. we absorb it whether we like it or not I mm -hmm. think you can resist it more if you're, if you're critical about it and that's what I would say the answer of sort of like why are you ruining our fun or why are you talking about something that's not serious enough the answer to both of those questions is the same thing which is pop culture is one of the major transmitters of our cultural values right it's where we as a culture I'm talking to sort of maybe North America here, right? Um, although certainly, you know, pop culture is a major U.S. export, too. Exactly, and we need yeah. to talk about that as well. Um, you know, it's where those mass cultural ideas get transmitted. And so, of course, we need to talk about it. We need to talk about the good, bad, and the ugly. And, um, and we need to talk about the fact that we like stuff. You know, I sort of analogize it to junk food, right? Mm -hmm. So... There's nothing wrong with eating junk food once in a while, whatever you like, Snickers or Fritos or whatever right. it is, right? Um, there's no harm in it, right? It's a nice little indulgence. Right. Um, if all of your diet was junk food... That's when it's a problem. You would be very unhealthy. And if the only thing you can purchase at the place where you buy food is junk food, right? We call that a food desert, right? Yeah. And we ha it has policy implications, right? Um, and the same is true of sort of pop culture, right? That there's nothing wrong with consuming junk food here. And it doesn't all have to be your broccoli <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and even the broccoli should always have some cheese sauce on it man um, <laughs> yeah broccoli normally it's hard yeah actually i love broccoli but i like cooked broccoli i can't eat cold oh no broccoli. not raw yeah, i can't raw abide broccoli. raw broccoli yeah. at all i admire people who can do that but yeah. it's not for me nah, they're insane. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh so it's like that right so if, if we feel like too much of the diet that we get to choose from which i think is true is junk food right then we have a structural problem that we need to do something about but there's nothing inherently wrong with eating a little junk Food. Right, absolutely. Well, speaking of things that's not junk food, seeing that something that's not, let's talk about your book. The oh, book, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because I I'll admit I haven't I haven't read it, but uh, so what you really really want the smart girl's guide to shame free uh, shame free what the smart girl's shame free guide to sex and safety. That's so, the one. so tell us about the book. Sure, I wrote the book. Um, it's kind of an anti self help book and a self help book at the same time. So most self help books. Uh, imagine that their reader is broken and say that the book will fix them, mm -hmm. right? And so this book says, there is nothing wrong with you, reader. <laughs> we live in a really <laughs> broken culture, right. but you still have to live in it, so here's how to figure out how to navigate it, right? And it's really for all the young women that I've met, I do a lot of traveling to campuses and, and other places and talk to young women about um, ending rape and, and sexual liberation issues, and, and I hear from so many of them, like, 
oh, I love what you're talking about. Like, but how do I even start knowing what I want to say yes or no to, right? Like, how do I start exercising the agency that you're all, ta- you know, you're talking about us having a right to, having a right to sexual agency is one thing, but like knowing what that would mean or look like is an entirely different thing in a culture, and this ties back into pop culture, that sort of really imagines women as props in men's play about sexuality, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> um, and so the book is about unpacking all the ways that we've been influenced about our, and the messages we've received and ingested about our sexuality. And, not, and the goal is not to become uninfluenced, right? I think that's a really... It's an impo- whether we like it or not, it's an impossible goal. It'll make you crazy to yeah. sort of because if you like start acting the opposite way of all the ways you've been influenced, you're still responding to those influences, right? So the, I think of it more for, for your older listeners, for more of my generation, more like a stereo equalizer, okay, right? Yeah, all right. <laughs> I don't know if the youth today know what that is, but um, you know, like you want to start identifying the way you've been influenced and turning up the volume on the ones that are working for you, and maybe trying to tone down the ones that you feel like are doing you damage, right? Mm-hmm. And so it's about sort of picking through that, figuring out what you actually want from sex. And you, the book really argues that, and I, I really believe, like, the most important sexual relationship in your life is the one you have with yourself, right? Mm-hmm. And it's about getting that that relationship in order. And then once you do that, you know, you're going to be in a much stronger place for navigating those very messy sexual relationships we have with other human beings. <laughs> right. <laughs> so when something I, like, so... It's pretty obvious what the mainstream media, traditional media, gets wrong about uh, any type of women's issues. <laughs> Other than the fact that they usually don't ask women the, what's, yes. uh, they don't have them on, essentially. Yes. What, and so that's clear. That's something, you know, anyone who's listening to my show would probably take that as, 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 a, as a given baseline. What, uh, what I'm trying to, you know, what I like asking is this. What, what is your, what should be your allied media? What is your progressive media? What did they get wrong? What's what? What is what is the what? what how can progressive media treat uh, treat these issues with with more respect? Or, I mean, obviously, it's like I'm, that's a very broad question. No, no, I you get know, it. I mean, I think that there's still an idea that women's issues are auxiliary, right, to lefty issues. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, in that. So, for example, uh, a few weeks ago, maybe it's a month or two ago now, because time is funny in my brain when I'm traveling a lot but um, (laughs) Glenn Greenwald made some joke about Obama raping a nun and like having impunity to do that and it was supposed to be sort of funny ha to illustrate his much more important point and when people largely women although not exclusively on Twitter called him out and said like hey don't minimize rape like right like that's not funny it's not appropriate to use that as a metaphor for what you're trying to say um he acted like we were being a nuisance, right? (laughs) Um, And so I think there really is still, in some quarters, not all, um, an idea that sort of lady issues, yes, we believe in those lady issues, but when they're they're not getting in the way. Like we saw that also with, you know, healthcare reform, right? That we were perfectly happy to throw abortion care for poor women under the bus in order to get the bill passed, right? Right. Like, and, and what that tells you is, Abortion care for poor women is not a core value, right? Like poor women having equal access to health care and reproductive choice and reproductive yeah. justice is not yet a core value of the left or it would have been non-negotiable. Yeah. Um, and too much of it is still sort of, yes, we support that, but not when it gets in the way of the things that we think are important. Right. Yeah. And it, it really just kind of, you know. It is really, you know, you mentioned even like, you know, people, the the, the tweet, but it's like it, it, that, you know, if you look no further than even, you know, the the Steubenville thing, where it's one of these things where this the, the prevalence of of rape culture. Yeah, I mean, you couldn't get a bigger example. I mean, if you didn't think it existed, all you had to look at, look at the coverage of that, and it's like, well, dear God, it clearly is a, is a not just a, a a small problem. It is a major major problem. It is absolutely. Although I will say that I think the progressive media did a great job of covering Steubenville, right. and I was really heartened by it. And I think even some mainstream outlets did a good job of covering it. I feel like the coverage of Steubenville was much more spot on than it would have been even I don't know three years ago. Um, you know. It's been a while since we've had a really high-profile rape case. Certainly, I mean, I think the the last one we can compare it to is the coverage of the allegations against Assange, um, which were a disaster and continue to be a disaster, Um, even on the left, right, that we can't somehow hold the idea that 
we may think this guy does good work or is a hero. But he also may be a, 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 and he a rapist. And also needs to be held yeah. account for okay, having for, maybe raped someone, yeah, right, absolutely. or two people, right? right. Like, we, we somehow can't hold those ideas right. in our head simultaneously and that, that these two women seeking justice are, again, sort of like an annoyance, right? Yeah. There is, we, wish that we wish they would go away right. because it's getting in the way of the things that are really important. Right. Um, when, in fact, you know, I would argue that they're also really important. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like, you can't, you cannot, you, it, you, can, you can pay attention to both. You can say that, you know, what WikiLeaks does is unbelievably important. Uh, the, the actual, perhaps, extra, extradition he would face to somewhere else is important and an issue, but you can't just say, ah, well, then it doesn't matter what happened to, right. p- potentially happened to, allegedly happened to these, these, these two right. women. Absol- absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Right, absolutely. Absolutely, right? Absolutely. Um, he should be facing those charges. Right. Um, and for people like Michael Moore and Keith Olbermann and all the sort of lefty icons to be just wanting to sweep it under the rug because it's inconvenient, right? Like, maybe we'll go all go on this. It's an inconvenient truth, right? Right. Um, it, it's, it sends a really clear message about the value of women's bodies and women's bodily autonomy, um, you know, when the chips are down. Yeah. Right? We can care about it as long as it doesn't get in the way. Yeah. Well, Jacqueline, Jacqueline Friedman, again, she's the founder and executive director of Women, Action, and the Media. She's the author of What You Really, Really Want, The Smart Girl's Shame-Free Guide to Sex and Safety, the host of Effing While Feminist. <laughs> You know what that means, people. I say the whole oh. word out when I host the podcast. <laughs> you can find all that and more at JacquelineFriedman.com. So, Jacqueline, uh, great talk. Thanks so much for sitting down with me. Happy to do it. Thanks for, for all the great shows.